knew we wanted to, in the second season, add a character to the show, and I thought it would be really interesting to add a female character. Uh, the more Sith had really popped for the audience. In spite of the fact that they've been tortured, they're unapologetic, they're proud of who they are. They don't regret what they lost. They, uh, they value it and they find meaning in it. And I think that's one of the reasons they're so compelling as characters. <laughs> We had introduced the character of Dana, who of course is also from the books, and she's wonderful, Jessica Murray. Jessica Murray was not available to, to be a series regular, and I don't think that character was the, the right character to be a series regular. So we came up with this idea for the final episode of the season where Richard would have to work together with one of his arch enemies in Lord Sith. We decided it should be Kara from the books. We auditioned um, in New York, Los Angeles, Sydney, Auckland, because we knew that this character could become the fourth series regular. And it was just very obvious uh, to us when we started watching the dailies that she was our lady. She's a Lord Sith. Kara's journey is one of a, a woman who's slowly giving her humanity back. When Kara started, she was fighting for Dark and Ryle and his beliefs, and through um, everything that she's learned and the journey that she's gone on, she's decided to use what she's learned to fight for good. She begins to use all of these tools that she's used for evil in the service of Richard's quest, and Richard's quest, of course, is about preserving all life and about defeating evil, and so there's a, there's a big irony in that. She's trying to redeem herself. when a new Lord Rao should claim the throne. When I got this role, I was really um, struggling to find myself in this character, you know, because she's so strong. But um, the more that I sit in this character, the more I kind of see a lot of myself in her. Tabret, you know, in, in, in real life is a very funny, sassy lady. Speaking without thinking. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, she's a, she's a pleasure to play. Wizard, we've been traveling for weeks. Wouldn't it be faster if you just turned us into birds? How would Leo carry the sword of truth in his beak? <laughs> she has a very, very dry sense of humor. She doesn't have a social filter, so she'll say the outrageous things that are true that nobody else will say out of social propriety. Do you know what kind of bird I'd be? Parrot that doesn't know when to stop talking. I think it's never easy coming into an already established cast as a regular because, um, yeah, you know, like you've got a bunch of people that started it together and they've, you know, got lots of relationships. <laughs> it's always about trying to laugh as much as you can and, you know, just bringing fun to set, which I, I think is so important, you know, when you're trying to save the world every day. <laughs> you need a bit of lightness somewhere. Get me a hug. It's to join into strapping men. The relationship between um, Kayla and Kara has been quite interesting. I mean, you know, when Kara first shows up, I think um, Kaylin wanted dead and evacuated as, as soon as possible, you know. But it's, you know, the way the writers have gone with it, they've actually um, worked this really beautiful friendship in there, you know, where she, she, she realized I was her ally. You know, I've been watching you for weeks, and I can tell you care about him. You can't read a Mord Sith. The Confessor in me can't. But the woman can tell you're not telling the truth. Just as her character evolved over the course of the season, over the course of the season, she became very close to her co-stars, and she and Bridget, by the end of the series, were very uh, close and goofing around and having a lot of fun together. She's a wonderful girl, and, you know, we... We have a really beautiful friendship. We're in each other's corners constantly. You know, when we're talking about makeup or magazines or clothes or you know what's going on on set or our characters and our love life. You know, she's um, she's turned into a, a really amazing friend. It's a hard world we live in, Kara. We don't get many chances. If you have feelings for Leo, you should tell him. Three, two, one. It's not easy spending six months in one of those red leather costumes. I have to make sure I drink plenty of water because this um, outfit, when the sun is shining, is, is very hot and I can get quite dehydrated. <laughs> Jane designed an extraordinary Lord Sith costume um, that is so rich in detail. 
There's a big difference between Kara's costume and the very first prototype. The design for the Maud Sith was one of the first designs that I did. The first Maud Sith was Dana, and Dana was quite a static role, and so we really sort of worked with that and made the skin tight red leather costume. Lots of books and buckles and um, lace. <laughs> it was all about sort of restriction and discomfort in a way because one of the things about the Maud Sith is that they feel the pain from the Agile but because they have been trained to overcome that pain they can handle it and so the costume was a bit like that as well. We wanted Kara to stay more Sith but to show that she was a little bit different and that she was just a little bit breaking out of the restriction of the Mord Sith. So what we did was we took away the corset and the neck piece. This is a picture of Kara at the beginning of season two and this uh, picture here, this is when we introduced the more relaxed version of her costume as she went on the road and as you can see it's um, much less rigid, it's more of an action suit. It's stretchy leather, um, thank goodness, um, because the original um, leather that, that I had was uh, quite a tough leather, whereas this is quite stretchy, so I've got lots of movement. We had to come up with ways to make what essentially was a really restrictive costume into something that was comfortable enough and flexible enough for her to be able to sort of do considerable action. I have a belt which holds my jewel my magic agile back hill. It's my working outfit that I have on every day and it's part of me, it's part of the character and I think it works very sufficiently. Every day is different, you know, it's um, full of drama and action and horse riding and trying to wield these agiles so that I look cool, you know, with my moves. It's all about looking cool. Kara's style of fighting is aggressive. She doesn't wait around to be attacked, whereas like Richard and with Caden, we would probably put a fight where they would defend first, block first, then go on the attack. Whereas Kara's character is straight to the point. She will go and advance on her opponent and take it up before she gets attacked. When we brought Tabard in for the first episode that she was in, she got very, very little time for any kind of fight training. Uh, we would have liked to have done more before the season began. She got some, but not a lot of fight training. We often don't get the time to go through the rehearsal process that, you know, on other productions you get the opportunity to do, so everything's just kind of quite fast. That was quite a challenge because Bridget and Craig are fantastic. And my first fight in sequence, I think, was with Craig and he's swinging his sword around, you know, and I was thinking, oh, oh dear, <laughs> I need to somehow look half as cool as that. Helps. We were a little bit worried about it and the costume, particularly the original costume, was even more difficult to fight in and we knew that she needed to be an action heroine and that she needed to fight. When I knew we were going to be okay was when I um, had been hearing concerns that Tabret wasn't getting enough fight training and that she wanted more and, you know, she wasn't 100% confident about you know, her ability to pull it off. And then I watched uh, some slow motion footage of Tabret fighting with these Agiles and doing a spin kick and her hair whipping in the air. And I said, wow, I don't know what anybody's worried about. She can fight. We probably could have helped her more earlier on by carving out more time for training, but it was a baptism of fire and she learned it on the fly and anybody who's watched the show would not question that she can fight. I'm just so lucky that the team behind me is just beautiful. She was up for anything. She didn't flinch in anything. Get in the more Sith bath naked, no problem. Uh, make out with other women, no problem. Seduce this guy, no problem. She just really jumped into it uh, with a lot of energy. Tabret really has just, like Kara, stepped onto the stage and owned that character.